Hi everyone, this is Bart Walczak from creativeimpatience.com. Today I want to show you a new script that I created for After Effects. Uh, it's called um, Master Thumbnailer and it helps you a lot with creating uh, thumbnails for uh, your files. For example, here I have a folder which, in which I have uh, one composition and four video files and I want to create uh, several thumbnails uh, for each of those. And up until recently it has been uh, quite a challenge and right now let me show you how easy it is. But before I run my script, uh, uh, let me show you what you get uh, with the script. You get a wonderful user guide where everything is explained and of course you get the JSX uh, script and then you get two files with uh, output module presets which you must uh, import before you run the script because otherwise the script will not run. So if you are using After Effects CC 2013 and above, you're going to use the uh, first file and if you're going to use uh, After Effects CS6 and uh, CC then you are going to use the second file. So now let me import these uh, presets and I do this by going to Edit, Templates, Output Module and then click on Load and then I am going to choose the CC2014 because this is the latest After Effects and of course it's going to load the uh, templates and uh, now uh, we can go to our window, uh, CI Master Thumbnailer and open the script. Of course you can see that I already used the script here before and I docked it on the left because well it's quite tall. Okay so what's going on here? Uh, first uh, you choose the place where all the thumbnails are going to be stored and of course you can choose any uh, place you want. I'm actually pretty happy with the uh, destination as it is now. Now this checkbox uh, is going, if you uncheck it, then all these uh, thumbnails are going to be put into this folder. But I don't want this, I want this, this structure, folder structure replicated. So I'm going to check this box on. Now I am going to choose the thumbnail size. And the thumbnail size I can uh, either select in pixels or in the percent of the original clip. Uh, actually I want this to be uniform, so I'm going to choose uh, 160 by 90 pixels, a uh, very small frame and then I can choose the resize method. And resize method, uh, I can either choose the fit to the width uh, or height or fill, uh, non-proportional fill or uh, the center crop of the uh, file or a composition. And in After Effects uh, CC uh, and above, uh, I can also choose the resize algorithm. In CS6, uh, only the bilinear uh, is uh, available, so this menu will not appear in CS6 but in uh, later versions it's going to appear. So I'm going to choose Bay Cubic and then I can move on to select which frames I want to have generated. Of course the simple uh, choices are at start, at end and of course at markers and it's going to choose the composition markers, those one in here, not the ones in the layers. And for the clip markers it's going to choose markers which are in the clips. Uh, you cannot set these uh, markers in After Effects, you have to use Premiere or Prelude to do that, but uh, both After Effects and uh, the script will respect the markers which were added. Next options are uh, you can generate one frame at uh, let's say 25% or at 25th frame or at uh, 25 seconds if you want for some reason to do that. Uh, because the clips are of varying length, I'm going to generate one frame at uh, one quarter of the length of this clip. Then also you can generate uh, a thumbnail every 7 frames or every 7 seconds or one, every 1 second and uh, so on. Also you can generate a frame every 7% which is going also to vary uh, between uh, the clips of varying length. Okay, So I'm not going to choose this but I'm going to choose the option to generate uh, 7 uh, thumbnails per clip which is going also to include the at start at end but you don't have to worry to uncheck uh, those boxes because no frame will ever render twice uh, I made sure of that I just uh, choose uh, those options and uh, we will see what happens next you of course uh, have to choose the render setting and uh, this is the, your usual render settings and here in the output module you have the four you have four choices right now and it's mostly the choice of uh, the file format but I also made it possible for you to create your own. If you create an output module with the name that starts uh, with the thumbnail keyword, then it will also appear in this list. So if you, for example, want to create the Targa export, uh, you're free to do it uh, on your own. 
And finally, uh, there is a way to choose how the thumbnails are going to be made. And uh, actually, I'm going to create a new one. I'm going to create uh, uh, thumb underscore uh, name and underscore counter. This is a frame counter. And I'm going to skip the extension. You can use the extension, but it's going to be ignored for compositions unless you put something with dot comp, for example, or whatever. So I'm going to ignore extension and also I'm going to add this uh, naming scheme into my naming preset. The, uh, and finally, I can also save settings to make sure that uh, when I open the script again, uh, everything will is going to be retained. Now, uh, these uh, settings are saved as uh, per After Effects version. So if you are updating, uh, then the script will reset. But if you want to uh, retain these uh, settings, then you simply uh, need to go to uh, s to users, username, library, application support, creative impatience, scripts, CI master, thumbnailer, and then just pick a file which you are interested uh, in and then uh, copy and rename it to your current After Effects version. And uh, all these settings will be uh, preserved. Everything is explained here in the user guide. Uh, so don't worry if you don't remember it right now. Uh, you can always check the user guide for a proper path on uh, both Windows and on OS X. All right, so let me go back to the script and now let me hit proceed and let's see where it lands. Oh, uh, first I have to choose the folder, <laughs> of course, and then let me hit proceed and uh, let me wait for After Effects to uh, finish uh, queuing, queuing the render and uh, rendering. Oh, oh, actually, it finished already. Uh, well, this is because I have it. I had it cached already. <laughs> okay, so let me now go to the destination, and as you can see, I have thumbnails for our composition. This is great, and for our files as well. All right, how cool is that? And of course, uh, there are more uh, thumbnails for composition because I also chose the option to render at markers, and this composition has. Uh, four markers within the range, or maybe even more. No, just four. And then uh, the clips have no markers. So obviously there will be more frames rendered for composition than uh, there will be for uh, for uh, the files. All right, I think that mostly covers it. One last thing, if you are using After Effects CS6, the script will run properly. Uh, one thing is that the user interface is going to be a little bit mangled so, because it involves a little bit more work than it looks at the first sight, uh, then uh, if you are using After Effects CS6 and you find it uh, not appealing to your taste, let me know and I'm going to see how many requests for uh, CS6 uh, uh, fix I'm going to get and then uh, I will uh, fix that. Because, uh, in all honesty, I don't know how many people are still using uh, CS6. So, I think that's it. I hope you enjoy uh, using this plugin. I hope it saves you a lot of time. And uh, this is Bart Walczak from Creative Impatience. Have fun, be creative, goodbye.